All right, so we're actually out here at Willow, uh, Willow Creek Park, and uh, this this is going to be still in Prescott, um, kind kind of close to the uh, the um, wildlife protection area they have over here. Uh, this area is I've never actually been to this section, although I've been around the area quite often. I've never quite been to here yet, so you can say it says native plant garden. What's to say? This is the city of Prescott. Who likes to express sincere gratitude. It says, "Welcome to Lake Tra Willow Lake Trail. Welcome, please read." Uh, it says that Willow and Watson Lake master plan following the voter approved $15 million purchase of the two lakes. Uh, I know there's a problem with the Dells going on right now, but um, generally speaking, we're talking about a. This is this is a non-motorized trail, 3.5 miles in length from Willow Lake. Uh, boat ramp current eastern terminus so there is a boat, uh, boat ramp uh, it looks like you, you can also have some, some some pretty nice trails that loop around this place let's get a little bit closer up to the lake and see what we're looking at here's a map uh, you can see how this is the topography of the area you can see how so this map does uh, a pretty good job of breaking down where everything is at you can see heritage zoo park you can see the red bridge uh willow lake trail of course is going to be down here at the, towards the uh the bottom that's where we're at and then uh willow lake as well now these are going to be particularly important to the area because people really really are uh very very conservatory about this area because of the fact that um the, these issue, these spots are they're disappearing quicker than we can we can replace them. Now I, I'm even talking about my student to my students about a a possible um, a possible project where we, we take action where we actually plant trees and try and actually engage with with the wildlife. But um, oh wow man look at these what are these things that is nice those, those orange wings now. Um, the big thing is just preserving these places. We're gonna get down by the lake and check it out, see what it looks like more down there. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get one of these so I can have. I'm still making my way around some of the the wildlife uh, area that's kind of been. It looks devastated by just lack of water, honestly. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of big tracks, man. Look at that. It looks like a deer track of some sort. You see large paw prints, uh, looking like either very large canines or pretty large kitties as well. Um, but then again, it turns into a swampland a, a little bit further out. I'm gonna backtrack and see if I can get another side, uh, another view from the from the left side of the, the lake over on this side. Um, like I said, man, this is a really enjoyable site. Believe it or not, believe it. Um, there's not, not a lot here, but the the lack of people and uh, just being here with nature is, is special. At Watson Lake, you're gonna get a lot more. So I walked back the trail a bit, and I forgot that. Uh, it's it's basically blocked off starting over there so i'm gonna have to cross a little bit through some more marshland to get uh the the view i want so we can do that right? just remember as you're marching through this kind of territory spiders snakes uh you know of course i had my one running in with the gila uh gila monsters they may look not so intimidating but i will tell you Every single tooth in their mouth is venomous, as opposed to a rattlesnake, which just has two venomous teeth. Not only that, but it's excruciating and can, can cause a pain that, that lasts for quite a significant amount of time, as well as uh, side effects that last for a couple days. Typically, these can involve convulsions and spasms within limbs. Uh, gen generally, typically unpleasant things. Uh, I could assume most people don't want um, unless you're like that guy Coyote Peterson who for some reason enjoys being injured by animals that's not me that's not me so okay we made it to the other side uh, you can see from the other side people hiking man people uh, a lot less people here though I mean it's, it's much more pleasant this way, I think. Uh, there's trails that loop around I'm not really focusing much on the trail oh crane those are nice Nice shot. I didn't even see they were there. Okay, that's cool. Um, and that's, that's what this is all about, man. Get out and revisit history. You see things you never know you're gonna see. Whenever I go out to these places, um, generally, I, I don't know what I'm gonna get. All right. So, uh, base Meridian. I ended up wandering around for a long period of time before I even found the location I was looking for. Uh, you know, this location I thought would be pretty small. It's a pretty large area. It's got a lot of trails too. I hear a lot of moving around in this grass. Um, oh wow, the specimen I just collected. There, there's like hundreds of them over here. This is uh, must have 
must be it. Yeah, it's it. So, let's try to see if we can get a little bit closer to the water, see what we see here. I saw something just jump in. Now, I think it's a cricket. We see a lot of moss. I'm trying to, like I said, just trying to get a general feel of the ecosystem. I, I'm a big follower of, of the Humboldt model of, of history and, and education, and generally, I'm a huge fan of Humboldt, uh, period. And that means embracing every element of the environment, whether it be the, the, the plants and the animals and, and the, the, the way the ecosystem flows together. Um, I, I believe that he was on to something when he was studying these things. And I think we need to go back to the holistic approach of, of studying these elements from an understanding that they are all one comprehensive uh, piece of a more, more large image, if that makes any sense. Um, but yes. Lots of ducks, lots of ducks. Um, again, I hate to drag on about Alexander von Humboldt and uh, his brother Wilhelm, but two of the most successful geniuses that that, that have graced uh, the, the earth. And, and not just that, most people don't give credit where it's due. A lot of the early work of Darwin and, and even the late work was inspired directly by the Humboldts. Uh, the analysis of, of, of previously known animals and, 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 and the, the study of the development of animals has really uh, been fundamentally altered by the Humboldts, but the credit has been given more to Charles Darwin, who uh, in the contemporaries has had both allies and uh, enemies in, in trying to uh, you know, propagate the, the, the theory of evolution. Of course, some people, I, I know people who still uh, are, are pretty against the theory of evolution, uh, whereas I know people who can, can still separate the two uh, aspects and still try and... Um, I, I've seen the, the meaning of religion with evolution, I've seen simply the rejection of religion, the acceptance of evolution, I've seen uh, the rejection of evolution with the acceptance of religion. So we, we have a spectrum here, um, and uh, really, who knows, right? It, it's, it's impossible to tell. Uh, you know, I'm not the creator, so um, I, I think generally you have to assume somebody. My, my father used to tell me that if you were to find a watch in the desert, and that watch, um, that watch that you found in the desert was, was 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 mechanical, right? It had mechanical pieces, it had mechanical parts, all parts that fit together to make a broader uh, construct. People are fishing out here. Um, and the main main point behind that was that um, sometimes I get distracted by the nature uh, a little bit too much. So my father believed that, and this may be a theory that's well known or propagated, and he may have just co-opted it. But generally, if you find a watch in the middle of the desert, you have to assume that somebody created it, right? Um, the, the mechanisms, the pieces, the, the arrangement of the structures, they have to be intentional, otherwise it would not function. Now, imagine the human being, which is, is just massively, massively more complicated and, and has systems that are more, um, more intuitive than even a, a pocket watch. Well, then we have to assume somebody had kicked the ball to begin with. Um, whether you call it deism or, uh, you know, Christianity has its own um, interpretations of these, but um, either way, I mean, we, we generally look at things as um, unipolar, where, as I think, I think the actual truth is typically um, involving a, a much, much more uh, complicated system that, that maybe we don't understand all the way. Uh, in fact, I would double down on that and say, I, I know we don't understand all the way. Um, another person I've been studying a lot is Jung. Uh, Jung and, and his, his ability to understand um, the inner psyche and, and, and metaphysics is, is, is phenomenal. And I, I would recommend reading Jung. Now, I don't, I don't want to get too far off my conversation. Uh, I'm trying to meet it halfway. You can see some of the Dells over there, pretty beautiful. More ducks, um, but I do want to point this out, man. It looks like somebody's like building structures or something out here. I mean, it looks like a pretty. I mean, I don't want to say well built, but it's not bad structure, right? I mean, you can see if somebody were to throw a, a tarp over top, this would be a structure worth uh, sleeping in if you had no other option. Uh, who knows if this is by a homeless person or just a um, a, a random structure somebody built for fun? But uh, it, it's. Uh, 
it was definitely, you can tell it's man-made. Uh, big tree over here, it looks like it fell down, wasn't cut. Uh, and again, we have what looks like to be uh, like a campfire spit. So I don't, it's pre pretty interesting. I don't see if I see any kind of flame, like any leftover pieces from the flames or anything, but I'm gonna take a look at this area and then we'll, we'll check out for the day. Oh, again, another, another nice, this shelter is even more comprehensive and gives more space, probably more protection. Like I said, a tarp would you, you, you'd solidify this thing. Um, is the interesting find. Like I said, you never know what you're gonna find when you're out in these places. The biggest thing is just to get out there. And uh, like I said, I'm looking a little disheveled right now. Um, sometimes that happens to us as, as people, as humans, as adults. Um, but I'm up here for an interview. I, I just wanted to stop by real quick and see this place because I'd never been here before. I uh, saw a nice specimen that we got to collect. That's going to be a big part of our, our, our new um, new progression in revisiting history. Is we're going to start looking at ecology. We're going to start looking at uh, the, the type of uh, life that, that, that involves all the systems that we're in and uh, try and collect samples, try and uh, create a comprehensive archive that people are able to go back to uh, hundreds of years from now and still have some sort of pro production quality that they can use on their own. Um, furthermore, please uh, subscribe and like. It helps us in the analytics, guys. We have a lot of travel channels doing junk videos. Um, I get out here myself. I fully fund Revisiting History myself. The projects you see are fully funded by Revisiting History, which is myself. Um, and uh, uh, I, I do have some recent help from Hallow Production to do. I appreciate their support. Uh, check out the, the Mousy uh, Revisiting People if you haven't already. Uh, and then also, uh, we'll also be opening up uh, oral history as well. So uh, whether it's Mousy, I'm going to try and adjust that for you guys to see my face. Uh, whether it's Mousy, it's a really short one, or some of my long-form interviews. Um, we'll have a lot more of those available. But like I said, please, uh, if you want to help us out, you know, I don't, I don't want you to spend money. Don't want you to do nothing. Just hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Share it with your friends. Oh, more fish, man. There's a lot of fish out here. Um, and that's the like and the share is enough for me, man. The support's more than anything. Uh, just being able to get the name out there and, um, and, and increase the ability of people to, to for, for my reach to get out there is going to be uh, the biggest goal because the, the brand is it, it's more of a public domain. I, I do these things for the public interest. I do these things uh, for public use. So a lot of my, uh, not all, not all of my archive. Most of my archive will be open to the public for free. So uh, projects, oral histories. I'm, I focus on people. I've been to. Uh, I focus pretty intensely on Barry Goldwater in the past. I focused on um, generally the '60s era, but more independently, I focus on Henry Wickenberg as well. Uh, more, more common to Arizona, of course. Goldwater was our senator, um, one of the long, longest lasting senators who ousted Democrat Ernest McFarland in a pretty, pretty surprising upset for the Democrats. Um, and then he was senator for a very long time until he passed off the reins to John McCain, who then again uh, was, was the Arizona senator for a very long time. Um, so whether you believe in term limits or not, it's, it's an undeniable fact that both of these individuals... Um, had a large impact for one. Uh, may they both rest in peace because they, they, uh, they I think most Americans try their best, especially once you get up to that level. Uh, but also, they're, 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 they're um, two Americans that need to be remembered. And that's my goal is to get out here, understand the ecosystem, understand the people, understand why decisions are made, and uh, most of all, inspire you to get out here and see this yourself. This is, this is not a, uh, History is not a textbook, okay? History is not a, a, a way of learning lessons from the past. History is real people. History is real stories. Um, you know, our history, I, I tell this to my students all the time, most people don't realize they're making history daily, right? The butterfly effect, you look into it. Um, just by me being here, collecting one sample, right? I collected one sample. Um, that, that could change the course of events for the world. Now, how great or small, I don't know, but it could. And uh, who knows what it would be like, right? So small, small things like this, every day we make history. Just don't forget that. 
And uh, you can either contribute in a very significantly positive way, or, or you can contribute to society in a terrible way that, that, uh, that brought down the Romans, that brought down the Greeks, that brought down uh, any society that um, prevailed too much in decadence, I would say. So just make sure you, you appreciate America, appreciate what you have, appreciate your family if you have one, um, and, and, and appreciate our history because, you know, there's, there's always those who would love to take a narrative and change it into something else because it, it's suitable, okay? I, I don't ever want you guys to look at that history as a narrative that is inconsequential or uh, has no real value in itself, but only serves to teach lessons. Now, I hate to, <laughs> I, I hate being on my pulpit, but I feel like I had to say it. Um, I appreciate everything. Like I said, please keep uh, supporting us, and uh, we'll keep getting out here and doing this for you guys, because this is sometimes a little rough on the body. So, thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy your weekend.